Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Mayday. I'm going to sit down in the clearing end of Kogan Canyon. Mayday. Mayday. That was Abner Benson, one of my rangers. Oh, yes, he's a new kind of ranger. You might say practically just invented. But suppose we go back to the beginning of Ab's story, and his wife Marge fits in pretty well, too. I was sitting in my office one afternoon when... Hey, Mr. Boss Ranger, you got time to talk to me? Hmm? Ab, Abner Benson, you old walrus. Boy, it's sure good to see you. Great Scott, it's been years. Shh, nuts a lot about all those years since we've seen each other, Bill. World War II has been over a long time now, you know. <laughs> Still the same old Ab. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Say, this is some layout you got here, buddy. Thanks. I got your letter, Ab, and I'm very interested to see this idea of yours in operation. When do we start? I'm ready. How about tomorrow morning? That'll give me time to set up the test site. Well, that's Jake with me. I'll need a little time to get organized, too, Bill. Can you operate from Naughty Pine Airfield? Or do you want to uh, fly out to the Fire Jumpers Field? Ah, uh, the Naughty Pine Field will be just fine. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, take you over to the house, get your bags in your room, and you can uh, go back to the field, and I'll get busy setting up the test site. After the operation is set up, we'll have supper at my house. How's that sound? Sounds Jake with me. <sighs> I love these small towns at night. Peace and quiet. Crickets and ketty, whatchamacallits. You, Eb? You like the small towns? You... Yeah, I guess Margie kind of changed me on that. I'll say she did. You used to love the big city life. <laughs> no more. No more, buddy. Say, uh, Abner, how about uh, filling us in on this pink cloud stuff and the flying machines you got? Sure, Stumpy. Actually, it's very simple. I've got some, well, two to be exact, World War II Navy torpedo planes. Uh, we took the gear from the belly off of the plane and then installed a tank that holds 72 pounds of slurry. Hog feed! <laughs> I didn't say slop. I said slurry. Oh! <laughs> you, you two ought to be a good match. Uh, slurry is a mixture of water and sodium calcium borate that makes a heavy foaming mixture. It won't sink into the ground or fly apart in the air, Stumpy. In the air? You mean you drop this stuff on a forest fire? <laughs> Not exactly on a forest fire but on burning grass and scrub, and it fireproofs it. No, you're joking. Uh, you'll find out in the morning if I'm joking. I sure will. This works, Bill. Are we going to have a new kind of range around these parts? A fire bomber? <laughs> That's a strong possibility. We've had some bad grass fires out on the flatlands, and it would even be useful in open clearings of a forest fire. It would also stop scrub fires like we have around Goose Lake once in a while. You mean you just dive in low and drop the slurry? Yep. And the speed and forward motion of the plane spreads the slurry. 
What good can one plane do? We got two. I've got a partner, Slim Short. Slim Short? <laughs> what a handle that is. <laughs> you should talk. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <sighs> Where's Slim now? He's out at the field. Out at the field? Where's he going to eat and sleep? Uh, Slim's very bashful. Not much for talking, Bill. But can he handle that plane? Imagine, he's better than me, old Hot Stick Benson. Hot Stick Benson. Boy, it sure is a long time since I heard that. Stumpy, I could tell you stories about this fly boy for two days. Wow, what a combat pilot. Ah, those are the good old days. Lots of excitement all the time. How would you like to fly jets, Sam? Oh, I sure would like to fly jets, Bill. But my reflexes are getting kind of slow now. <laughs> you look at my head, you'll find a gray hair or two, too. <laughs> if you look at mine, you'll find a black one or two, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'm going to head for home and hit the sack. Want a bunk here for the night, old-timer? Don't mind if I do. Kind of late to walk home now. Yeah, I guess we better turn in all right, Bill. I'll have to go out and give Slim a hand bright and early in the morning. Well, wake me up, because I want to take a look at your flying sprinkling can before you take off. Close-up look at your flying machine. Oh, Slim will cut the engine in just a minute. The sight of that plane sure brings back a lot of memories when we were on the carrier together, Am. Ah, don't they, though, Bill? Those were the days. Well, say, now we can snoop. Right. I'm sure interested to see how you rigged the tank. Well, Stumpy, uh, you see here, this is where the torpedoes used to hang. Now we've put the tank in its place. Pretty tricky. Hey, Slim. Hey, Slim, stick your head out of that cockpit. Yep. What's on your mind? Well, this is Chief Ranger Bill Jefferson. Glad to meet you, Slim. Yep. And the old-timer there is Stumpy Jenkins. Howdy, Gabby. Yep. See there? I got a long yep, and you got a short one. Kind of short on, John. When's the test? Right away, as soon as Bill gives the word. I've got 8 o'clock. By 9, we'll be at the test site and ready. Take off at 9, and I'll radio the exact moment you're to drop the pink clown. Ranger 1 to Bomber 1. Are you ready, Ab? Roger, Ranger 1. I'm ready, ready, ready. Just say when. Attention, all ground units and fire jumpers. This is a test. I repeat, this is a test. Okay, Abner, show us how. All right, here I come. Ready or not. fire dies out when it hits the doused grass. Won't be long the way the fire's moving. Mayday. Mayday. Ab, what's the matter up there? No control. No control. We're going to belly flop in. Ab, tell us where you're going down. We must know. We must know. I think I have time. Map shows clearly end of Cougar Canyon. I'm going in. This is terrible. Ranger 1 to Jumper 1. This is Jumper 1. We heard the whole thing, and we're taking off right now to that clearing. Good boy. I'm sending in a chopper with a stretcher. Spare nothing to get that pilot. You understand? Spare nothing. Yes, sir. Taking off. Stumpy, you take command of this fire and observe the test and report to me. I'm going to hop over to the accident in the copter and then to the hospital. Yes, sir. I hope he needs a hospital. <laughs> Yeah.
He's still breathing, Bill. Still breathing. Easy, Slim. Take him out easy, carefully. Okay. Here, let me give you a hand. We'll lift together. Yeah. Now, lift. That's fine. Now, let's carry him right to the stretcher on the copper. Okay. Watch your footing. A fall could be fatal. That stretcher won't fall off the chopper, will it? Not a chance. Set him down easy now. Easy. There. Yeah, that's fine. Now, fold the blankets around him. We'll get going. Now, the straps, too? Yep. All of them across the basket, and he'll be securely held in. Okay. All right, hop in. Okay. Harv, let's get this man to the hospital. common sense you looking for? My pencil. <laughs> Try your right ear and see what you find. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm glad you don't wear glasses. You'd be looking for them, too. And all the time, they'd be parked on your forehead. How's that? Fractured leg, a thousand bruises, and a swollen face. Not nearly as bad as it could have been. Phew. That's a relief. How did the test go? Fine, just fine. Fire burned up the grass. It had been soaked with the slurry and stopped. Burned out just like it ran into a brick wall. That's great stuff, real great stuff. Am sure I thought up a good one. I'm afraid it isn't going to do him much good, though. What do you mean? His leg will mend, won't it? Yes, but his wife won't. <laughs> Hi, honey. Look at my leg. It's almost as good as new, and the doc says now I can walk with this plaster cast. Look at the gadget they put on the bottom of it so I can step down on it. I'm so glad, Ab. Now you can come home. Home? Well, Marge, I've, I've got a job to finish here before we can go home. Well, I... I rented a house here in Naughty Pine. You did? Oh, Marge, what would I do without you? This is a compromise. Oh, I quit flying, and we'll live here at least until I get the fire bombers organized. Yes. I... Oh, Ab, please be reasonable. All through the war, I lived in fear of your death, and all the years since the war, it's been the same thing. I just can't take it anymore. Every time you take off, my stomach convulses into a square knot, and it stays that way till you land. Oh, Ab, if you love me at all... Quit flying. All right, Margie. Just to show you how much I really do love you, I'll stay out of the sky. Ab! Oh, Ab, you're a wonderful husband! Hiya, Bill. Hello, Ab. That thing must get pretty heavy after dragging it around all day. Oh, I don't mind the cast. At least I can walk. I want to appoint you boss ranger of the fire bombers immediately. What do you think of the idea? I don't think I can accept it. I thought you'd say that. But I won't take no for an answer. You want a grounded flyboy to head a flying outfit? It happens in the service all the time. Uh, not to me, buddy. Oh, I'm not complaining. I made a promise to Margie, and I'm going to keep it. Cover up my restlessness in front of her. Well, that's fine. But you have a job to do with the rangers, too. I'll finish organizing the fire bombers for you. When the job is done, I'm leaving. All right. I won't press you. But I think you'll change your mind. I won't be a duck with clipped wings, and that's that. And 
You'd rather be a dead duck. You think he means it, Sonny? Perhaps. He's going through a terrific adjustment right now. And so is Marge. They need help. They should take their problem to the Lord instead of trying to solve it themselves. They will, as soon as they realize that their own strength is insufficient. What are you going to do in the meantime to get the fire bombers a going unit? You've given me an idea, old friend. I did? What? Slim. Yep. You tell Ab I want his organization report on my desk first thing in the morning, you understand? Yep. Thank you. Goodbye. Yep. Again, I ask, what are you up to, young feller? We've got to make Ab realize that being an administrator is more important than flying. <laughs> I'll get it, Stumpy. Marge, come on in. Thank you. Please sit down. Bill, I'm sorry to bother you in your leisure time, but... Well, I just have to talk to you about Ab. Go ahead, shoot. I thought if we had a house and he came home every night to a hot meal and his wife, he'd get over being grounded. But I can see this isn't working out, and I don't know what to do. Have you talked this over with the Lord? Yes, many times. I'm afraid I haven't been very receptive to his answers. Most of my prayers are just complaints. I've talked it over with the Lord. He's given me an idea. Wonderful. Oh, perhaps this is why the Lord sent us here to Naughty Pine, so he could help... Us through you. Well, the Lord works in strange ways, his wonders to perform. What is your idea, Bill? I'm going to make Ab realize that he's needed as an administrator, and his job is the most important of the fire bombers, even if he is on the ground. I hope and pray it works. Oh, how I hope and pray it works. Let's have a word of prayer right now. Heavenly Father... You know all about this problem, even before we think it. However, we're asking for your help because your wisdom is perfect. You are the living God. Please help this husband and wife work out their problem. And if you've decided to use me as an instrument, give me the wisdom I need to do the job. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. This has given me new strength. Just remember what the psalmist wrote. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Well, here's the organizational chart for the fire bombers you wanted, Bill. Mm-hmm. Looks very good, Em. Are you sure six planes and pilots are enough to do the job? Oh, sure. I can always fill in as an extra pilot. Mister, you're the boss of this outfit, and it's up to you to do the directing and the administration work. That'll give you a full day's work just to take care of your job. But what if I go back to flying? You're through with flying. Why are you forgetting the promise you made to your wife? The promise you made as a Christian gentleman and because you love your wife. Yeah. I guess you got me cold, buddy. But I just can't see how being the boss is going to take up all my time. It will, believe me. Uh, by the way, I'm having direct wires put to your home for the alarms. Well, can't you call me or stop by the house? Ab, stop trying to use me for a crutch. This is where we sort out the men from the boys. 
When that alarm goes off in the dead of night, or right in the middle of your Sunday dinner, I'm counting and depending on you to cut the mustard. That's your job, mister. You're part of the team now. If you strike out, it could cost some lives. Mister, you'd better hit the ball. You're snoring. Hmm. Ab. Ab, wake up. What's up, Oh, I guess I'll go sleep on the Davenport. Hey, what's that? Oh, it's the alarm. A jumping catfish. Get out of my way, Marge. Ranger 1 to Bomber 1, over. Bomber 1, over. Ab, this is a two-pronged fire in area 300 on the map. Mostly scrub and grass. Fire Tower 8 reports fire moving fast. Now get your boys in the air and drop the slurry in front of the fire. Acknowledge. I understand. We'll give this one a good bath and pronto. Ab, tell your boys to watch out for my copter. I'm going up to take a look at this one from the air. I don't like this two-prong deal. Over and out. Roger. Out. Stumpy, you ride the chopper with me. I may have to put you on one prong of the fire as commander while I take the other. This could work out to be a good trap, Sonny. That's what I had in mind. Step on it. Don't spare the horses. Looks like a mean one, young feller. A lot of men could be in danger if those two prongs turn toward each other and close. You're right as rain, old friend. Want me to take the right prong? No, change my mind. We'll stick together. When we land, I'll command the crews on the ground. You take a radio and go to the ridge and watch. Watch for the prongs to turn toward each other like a pair of ice tongs? Right. We don't want to get trapped by a pincer movement. You, Slim? Yeah. Good shot. Thanks, Mr. Jefferson. Ab, Slim just dropped his load. Who's working the other prong? Oh, don't worry about a thing, Bill. Three planes will hit each prong, and that'll be it. What? There's something wrong with that? We'll give it the old one-two knockout punch. What are you going to do if the prongs start closing in? Ah, oh, never thought of that. Ab... You'd better hold two of your planes. Keep them aloft. Don't let them drop their load. It's too late. We'll let them all make a bombing run. All right, Em. Get your planes reloaded and aloft. Unless the wind picks up, you've got about 15 minutes to reload and get back here. You've got to keep an escape lane open till all the men are out. 15 minutes until the prongs close for good. 15 minutes? I can't do it in that time. You've got 15 minutes, mister. Get out of your pink cloud and supervise that operation. Cut the mustard, mister. Fifteen minutes. I want to feel that slurry running down the back of my neck. (laughs) We ain't going to get all the men out, young feller. There ain't enough time. Push the men harder. Make the move. I mean, really move. Yes, sir. Ab, did you hear that? I sure did. Slim is back, and so is Al. I've got to leave the radio and help them load, Bill. Get with it, mister. Ten minutes. This heat's terrific. Better start digging in. Not yet, Stumpy. Push the men. Make a move. But there's 50 men in gear yet to come out. Tell them to drop their gear and run for it. Five minutes. Stop me. Have the men dig in and cover. You too, Bill. 
I will. Ab, where are those planes? Three minutes. The escape lane will begin to close. Ab, where are those planes? Bill, in the name of common sense, dig and cover. Right. Give me the shovel. Before you blow your stack, Bill. That third plane was me. I had to do it, Bill. I had to do it. And I'll tell you what else I did. Okay, shoot. I did the victory roll. I told him to fly once more, Bill. I insisted because if he didn't and there was tragedy, well, you know what I mean. It was for old time's sake. And that did it, Bill. I mean, it really did it. It seems to me you did about all you can did. Busted rules, disobeyed orders, forgot to think, broken a promise. Is there any more? (laughs) Yes. Marge said I could fly this one time, and now it's cured me. Bill, you've shown me that my job is on the ground supervising this outfit. I finally came out of that pink cloud and settled down to earth. And that's just what Ab did. The Lord works in strange ways, his wonders to perform. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. This is a Moody Radio Network production.